What we do is twofold. There are two methods of doing it. The first method is the formal method. In cancer, clinical trials in the NHS are delivered through networks and they are designed and monitored by clinical studies groups. So there's a group for each tumour type, lung, breast, etc. and other groups for cross-cutting themes like palliative care, for example. Each of those groups has two consumers or patient reps sitting on them. So consumers are involved with looking at trials from the moment they're designed all the way through to being delivered and of course the reporting of results and the change of clinical practice. So we have that structure. The second way is the new approach that we are, we are trying. It's, it's new to us. We formed a group of patients who are interested in working with drug companies and specifically with AstraZeneca. And what we're going to do is set up a patient panel which will meet either over the phone or face to face or even online. But it's a group of people, not one or two, and they will meet with AstraZeneca's researchers to talk about a whole range of trials and issues such as what's the best time to recruit someone after they've had bad news, for example. How do you, how do you make that approach? And it's, it's around trying to make these trials more attractive to patients because it's in our interests. If the product works, it's in our interest to make it available to patients as quickly as possible. So that means the trial should recruit to time and to target. Now that also of course does help AstraZeneca because they are paying for it. But our motive is drugs companies make products which, if the trial works, are useful to patients. So we want to try and get them made available as swiftly as possible. Most of us probably do not, because the process of getting a drug from the moment it's designed to actually accepted as, as a general treatment for patients is a long and complicated one. And even after you've got the drug design tested in, in a few people, tested in more people, tested perhaps multinationally to get the patient population up to the right number, you still then have to go through all, all the stuff about licensing it. Even after the trial, it has to be licensed. People have got to run it, deliver it as a treatment and so on. And the company has to market it they have to manufacture enough of it. All those things have to be sorted out by, by other people. There's not really room for patient involvement there. So it is an incredibly complicated process. We do have this misfortune in this country especially that medical research has often picked up a bad name because of mistakes or things done, not very often and by a very few people, but they have big impact. And sometimes there is a lack of trust Drugs companies love to do lots and lots of tests, blood tests, taking tissue types and so on, and scans. And sometimes there comes a point where we, we just want to say, enough is too much. Can you reduce the number of tests? Can you reduce the number of scans? Can you reduce the number of times we have to go off to someone else's hospital? We need to create a situation, I think, where people understand what data is actually held, and I think many patients, including myself, are quite surprised by just how much is held and used without us knowing about it, and also where people are much more ready to give consent where it's needed for use of that data. Many of us now appreciate that if we have a supermarket loyalty card, the supermarket knows what shopping we buy. What we don't necessarily understand is the interpretation that people can get from that and the intelligence that people can get from that about our lifestyles and about our other habits. I think the same is also true with, with medical records. Many patients don't quite understand how much those records can be linked and sometimes are linked. And often we don't realise it because we ourselves have to repeat our own story every time we see a new doctor. But often that information is available. It, it's there if someone looks, and especially when it's hard data, things like blood tests, blood pressure readings, diagnosis, scans, all of that can be held electronically.
I don't think we know what the right collaborative model is because we haven't found it yet. What we have got is lots of things that seem to work. Very, very small example. Last November, we held a, what we called a Dragon's Den, where we as a group of patients, and it turned out there were 80 of us in a room at a conference, we, we invited researchers to submit proposals in advance and come and talk to us about their research ideas. All five groups of researchers who came to us, including three from AstraZeneca, have given us great feedback about that. In a couple of cases, they've completely rewritten their ideas about research and completely rethought how they would deliver it. That's absolutely brilliant. That worked. It's unrealistic to say, oh, let's do one a month or whatever it may be. So that worked on that occasion you might not even be able to do it every year because it would just get stale. If we don't know what the right model is, then we just keep looking for it. And I don't think there ever will be one model. I think there will just be a range of solutions from a range of people in a range of different circumstances. The right one is the one that works.